Hello, my fellow forgiven sinners. Grace and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As a parent, I, I, I found how often I give my kids what they need, but at that time, it's not really what they want at all. Today, Jesus gives something that we absolutely needed, but maybe at first, no one really wanted it. Today, we talk about Jesus' baptism, as it is recorded in Matthew chapter 3. We'll explain what John's baptism was and meant, what Jesus' baptism was and meant, and what our baptism today is and means. Our reading begins, Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. This is right at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, and he starts things off by going to John the Baptist, who had been going about his ministry for some time now. John the Baptist was baptizing people in the Jordan River, calling people to repentance, and proclaiming that the Messiah, Jesus, was coming soon. Jesus now comes to be baptized by John. And this is the point where often the question comes, why did Jesus have to be baptized? We need to understand something here. John's baptism is different from our baptism today. You can kind of see a distinction there in Acts chapter 19. John explains what his baptism means in the verses just before ours for today. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, John says, I baptize you with water for repentance. John's baptism was a ceremonial washing as a way to acknowledge that one was not ready for the Messiah to come. It was a public acknowledgement that a person had not been living their life for God instead against God, and they wanted now to turn from those evil ways. Well, this brings us another problem. Well, still the same problem before. We still don't understand why on earth did Jesus need to be baptized? I mean, Jesus was perfect. He never sinned. He doesn't need to repent. He doesn't have evil ways to turn away from. And this is why John tries to stop Jesus. The next section we read, But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? As you read through the Gospels, you find that John the Baptist isn't alone here. Other people often try to stop Jesus from what he's about to do. Jesus is just a surprising individual. Again and again, he does the opposite of what people expect him to do. Think about your own life for a moment. How often do we try to stop Jesus from doing what he's going to do in our lives? We would expect God to grant us the blessings we want, right? Enough money to get by or just to be comfortable. The, the health and wellness of our loved ones and, and of ourselves. Fulfillment and satisfaction in our own lives. But Jesus doesn't always bring those things, does he? Often he allows suffering to get to us. And we say, God, why would you allow something like this to happen? Instead of giving us answers to those problems, instead we get something that probably nobody wanted as they would come to church, as they would click on a sermon video. We get Jesus giving us his own baptism. What good is that? Who wanted that? Well, let's take another look at what Jesus' baptism was. After John tried to stop Jesus, we read, Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. Jesus says here that his baptism fulfilled all righteousness. It accomplished all fairness. It completed all justice. You see, this was Jesus, the perfect man, who had done everything right, taking our place. Sinful people who have done nothing right. This was Jesus repenting, not for his own wrongdoing, but for ours. This was Jesus 
repenting in our place for every time we said we'll never do that evil thing ever again, even though we've made that promise countless times before. This was Jesus repenting of that horrible wrong that still gets caught in the back of our heads when things are quiet enough. This was Jesus repenting of every human wrong in human history as he takes all of our evil into himself so that he can be our perfect substitute. The one man in the world who perfectly acted out everything that God desires. The one man who, after repenting, never sinned again. The one man who took responsibility for every single sin committed by humanity since the beginning of time. And he did that so that he could die, bearing the full force of the Father's divine anger against evil. Jesus' baptism was him taking our place and so repenting of all of our sin so that we might receive his place. And he might look at us as those who have repented and are now forever freed from sin. And so after Jesus' baptism, we see this incredible thing which teaches us about our baptism. We read, as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I love, with him I am well pleased. At Jesus' baptism, we see the full Trinity present. God the Father speaks. God the Son comes up out of the water. God the Spirit descends like a dove. And this is why our baptism today is nothing like what John's baptism was back then. At Jesus' baptism, we see the full triune God there to accomplish our salvation fully in Christ, and so too at our baptism. The full triune God is there to accomplish our salvation fully in Christ. Our baptisms are not only repentance, now, our baptisms certainly do mean that we daily repent. We turn from our evil every single day, but our baptism means so much more than that. Our baptisms mean that we are connected to God who took our place. It means that we are granted Jesus' perfect repentance to be our own. It means that Jesus' blood payment for the sin of the world is his blood payment for our sins specifically. It means that God's promise to the world to save the world from sin, death, and the devil, that promise has been given individually to each one of us. And through baptism, God promises to give you everything at the resurrection, life as he always wanted you to enjoy it. This is yours to believe. My fellow children of God, I don't know if you really wanted Jesus' baptism when you clicked on this video. I imagine most of us were maybe looking for something else, like finances or health or solutions to our relationship or our occupational problems. But I pray that you know now how much you needed Jesus' baptism as he repented perfectly in your place. And as you see how God has given you everything you needed in Jesus, I pray that God strengthen you to trust him even when he doesn't give you what you want right now. Amen. And I say, I say, I say, can't be that easy.